How do you grow your light when there's so much darkness, conflict, and division in the world today? When you grow your light bigger, don't you get more attention? And do you even want that? How do you handle all that? Today's guest, Claudia Torres, is a mindfulness advisor and connector, and she has some wonderful advice to give us today about how to live and love authentically with ourselves and others while growing our light with confidence. Join us. Soul Nectar Show, the Soul Nectar Show. You're invited, delighted to discover who you are. Anything is possible if you believe. So join us on this beautiful journey. Soul Nectar Show, Soul Nectar Show. Soul Nectar Show. Hello and welcome to Soul Nectar Show, that show where we talk about all things essence, where we gather around the campfire and share our stories of connection to that which is bigger than us, to the big mystery beyond the veil, to what's really happening underneath the surface, beyond our vision. There's some other thing at play that is happening that's influencing all the things we're experiencing. And it's bringing us to a deeper level of understanding of ourselves And primarily, the biggest understanding of all is there's nothing wrong with any of it. Mm. As we encounter these things that we, our brains want to tell us, this is so wrong, it shouldn't be happening, it shouldn't be like this. I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird, and I, I help people through those conversations that they have in their own lives. How do I find the truth for myself? How do I know what's real when everything around me is telling me the opposite of what I know in my heart? How do I hold steady with myself when people I care about even, or, you know, maybe pressuring me to take actions I don't agree with that aren't right for me. How do I live with myself, with my choices? These are the conversations that we're all pressed in to have at this time on the planet. There's so many projections and ideas and untruths. And in the middle of all of that is a little tiny grain of truth. And so how do you, how do you sift through that haystack to find the needle? And here we are together on Soul Nectar Show. We're going to have a beautiful conversation today with Claudia Torres, who is a mindfulness advisor and connector. She's been practicing mindfulness and yoga for over 15 years. She's the founder of Presently Aki, a mindfulness community that's dedicated to helping you stay present by offering mindful workshops in all aspects of your life. Her podcast, Presently Aki with Claudia, interviews experts in the wellness field as they advise us how to live and love authentically with ourselves and others. So welcome, Claudia. Hi, thank you so much. Hi, Carrie. How are you? I am doing well. As you know, we had a little conversation before the show, just kind of touching back in with each other, getting centered and and asking, you know, what does spirit want to flow through us today for the benefit of the collective? Right. And so I want people to get to know about a little bit more about you and how you became this mindfulness advisor. Sure. Tell us a bit about your story and then let's go into the topics of the day. Perfect. It actually touches a lot what you uh, started with. My journey as a truth seeker, it's basically what it is, is a loner path. You know, it's, um, I started in my mid twenties and I already in my, as a teenager, I received a few messages from spirit, not knowing what that were, what that was, or that there was a spirit or a source telling me things. Um, so at the age of, I would say preteens, maybe 14, I already knew who I was, um, but I didn't accept and I fought and I just started living life like everyone until my mid twenties when I found yoga and, and meditation. And that's when I found myself again. And it still took a while. It took a lot of work to see and undo and unlearn and trust, right? That became even till today so many lessons that just unraveled within itself because I decided to dive deeper, to want to know the truth, to the truth of myself and the truth of the world. And so that's how I navigated life. And I still had social aspect to my life, but that social aspect is always me pretending and hiding who I truly am because the world wasn't ready for a person like me. And as I got older, I met more people like me and I felt great because I didn't feel alone anymore. 
And so the path to truth seeking is it is very lonely, but because the collective is expanding so much that I am no longer alone in that. And I have people that I can rely on and I have a podcast that I can talk about this. So, you know, for anyone out there that feels alone in the the thoughts of truth of love and light don't give up because that's given to you for a reason and that's for you to dive and research and accept and it will take a lot of time but because we already have been raised a specific way especially in the society that that love seems crazy if that makes sense right fear is the the thing we all should be fearing all things but when it comes to real love, we live in a world where that's a no-no. And so that to me, it's more of fire for me to continue the fight for love because love is why we are here as a human collective. And I don't mean like Disney fairy tale love. I mean love in all aspects of ourselves and others, nature, the universe, other planets, insects love and everything and and you cooking laughing everything and so it's so truly important and I felt called to this and you know as we were talking earlier because I always saw something in my 20s that you know dating and relationships that baffled me and that's kind of what kind of pivoted my perspective was I felt like, oh, wait, in relationships, everyone's okay to be like, I hate you and curse you out and blah, blah. But everyone's so afraid to even say, I, I like you. And maybe I'm in love with you. And that's so scary. And I thought, <laughs> that's more scary than saying F you. That's, that doesn't make sense. We should be more open and vulnerable with each other and loving with each other and understanding because we're all hurting, all of us. But the world was the opposite. So for me, I was like, oh, I, so obviously it was hard for me to date, right? Because everyone was so ready to do the fearing part, but not the loving part. And I wanted the loving part. And I was like, okay, well, I'll give that to myself. Yeah, well, that's the ultimate quest, right? It's the ultimate Ooh. quest of finding the love within, finding right. the access point within yourself that you love mm -hmm. yourself no matter what is happening on the outside. Correct. Right. And when you do that and you have your own supply, you don't need to get it from someone else. Because when you need to get love from someone else, that gets really sticky and tangled up, right? It really does. It really does. And once you have that foundation with yourself, nothing can move you. Nothing can sway you. Even if you have a moment of doubt, but because you've created all these tools within yourself, you'll have introspection and able to be like, oh, is this real or is this not? Is it just me or is it an empath? Is, are these my feelings? So you are able to dissect it versus just accepting what feels like right now in your space that to be true. No. So when you have that foundation, then it's easier to navigate life. And when you're depending on someone else to make you loved and happy, then what happens when they leave? They take that with them. So that, that doesn't work. For any of us, we really need to solidify this within ourselves. Not to say that we won't be loved by someone. It will just be a plus. We love ourselves. And then so-and-so loves me. And this person loves me, my family, my friends. And now it's just plus, plus. It's more love. What, don't we want more love? Not just a little bit? No, we deserve all of it. Yeah. And it's, and it's love that's always present versus love that's only there if you're doing what somebody wants. Mm -hmm. Conditional love. Right. Right. Love is everywhere. And when you have those connections with yourself, you make the connection with nature and nature will always tell you love is here. Love is always here. And it's here. The sun shines every day, no matter if you're good or bad, that says a lot. The sun does not decide like, oh, well, Claudia wasn't good today. She doesn't get sun, but Carrie gets sun. That doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> yeah, it's not conditional. It's, you know, we're having an experience. Plus this whole idea that something's bad or wrong or good mm -hmm. or wonderful mm -hmm. is also a judgment. And, Correct. you know, I often find myself in judgments because I've got the shadow of judgment in my mm. Gene Keys chart. For anybody who doesn't know what Gene Keys are, they're just... This little bit of brilliance that Richard Red created, it's this wonderful system and I use it all the time for myself and my clients, but it gives you this little map of all your shadows that you uh, face in your lifetime. Mm 
Mm. And when I saw my map, I was like, this is exactly what my brain does to me all the time. <laughs> like, this is it, right? And those judgments are tricky, you know. I've, so I've been dabbling with this my whole life mm. incarnation this time and really consciously over the last year since I found these gene keys. It's like, oh, yeah, what is judgment? Judgment is saying that something is bad and something is good. Right. And it's saying that I like this or I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And it's saying like blanketly so, usually judgment can get to be righteous, right? Like it can right. be righteously so. Right. And anytime that I get righteous about something now, I realize I need some stillness. Yes. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. Yes, because when we do get righteous, that's our ego. Our ego is like, yes, I, I'm woke and everyone is not. I know, I know best. I know this. Or I, as a vegan, I'm vegan. So I'm saving animals. You're not. You know, it's like, no, that's not how that works. When you make a decision for your life and your lifestyle, that's your business. And it isn't for your ego to just slap it onto somebody's face because they don't, they're not living the way you are. That's judgment, deep judgment. And when you're in mindfulness and yoga, you have to practice non-judgment with yourself. You start there. You can start with other people like, oh, let me just start not judging others. No, start you. All, all your, your self-talk, what does that sound like? Are you judging yourself? Oh, I can't believe I did this. Oh, I'm stupid. Oh, I'm, those are things that are real. And we all have them until we work on them and not having them anymore. So when that self-judgment goes away, you'll also start to not judge others and you'll start to accept everyone as they are. And Carrie, I'm pretty sure this is true for you, that when you do accept everyone as they are, you start to see their beauty. Yeah. Even the ones that provoke me the most, like yes. <laughs> I, there was a Facebook thing that was happening the other day and this guy came on and he did this behavior. He kind of posted this little snarky comment. Mm. And then he followed up with smearing somebody that I actually really adore. You know, mm. he, like, you shouldn't listen to that guy because he's an idiot kind of right. thing. And, you know, I spent 20 years like that with someone who did that kind of thing to me. Wow. And I really, after a while, it breaks down trust mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when someone continually treats you that way. And it makes you feel, I don't know, it made me feel like... He, What's the point of me sharing my my perspective when all I'm going to do is get torn down by somebody else who's got some more evidence than I have or more credentials or just like a more snarky comment to make, you know, because right. at some level, I don't like engaging in that kind of conversation. And um, so there was a gift, actually, this man that did that because it made me aware that I still had some and still probably have some wounds to address you know, inside of myself from that 20 years with this person who did that to me constantly. And why did he do that to me constantly is the next question. It's like, well, maybe the whole relationship was there to help me to know my own truth. Mm -hmm. You know, when the person closest to you is the one tearing you down. Right, right, right. And that happens more often than not because, you know, like I said, we were all suffering and we're all hurting. So when we're not healing, we project our hurt onto the the closest person, whether it's your husband, wife, child, parents, whoever is the closest is going to get it if you're not doing the healing. And you're not going to know that you're doing it because you're doing it out of reactivity. You're not having introspection like, oh, did I hurt Carrie when I said that? No, you're just going through your emotions without ever stopping to think that you affect people negatively. Because you're coming from a place of hurt. It's not on purpose, but when we see it, it, you know, when we become this healer for ourselves, and I don't mean like, oh, we're healing people, we're healing ourselves. When you start healing yourself, you are a healer. When you start doing the work that your responsibility is to create boundaries from people like that, because people will always take as much as you let them. And until you create the boundary that they cannot anymore, you will see the truth of themselves because people, I read a quote the other day, people that have been taking from you without boundaries. And when you create the boundary is when, when you'll see that they're they're not having it like, Oh, Oh, now she wants to be like this. Or now he wants to be like this because they were benefiting from you not having any boundaries. And so it's really important. And then when you go deeper and deeper into yourself, you'll see that there's a light 
that is you. And that's what you're protecting. This light that everybody wants to grasp at. And the brighter you become, there's going to be more people like that. But it'll become easier to create those boundaries. In the beginning, it's a lot difficult, right? Because it's a new thing for us to just learn who we are and what's the people around us, the environment, and just collectively make an inventory of your life, right? And that takes a little bit. And then your inventory and your life and the things that you want to heal, right? And when when you start doing the healing work, people around you are not going to respond well. And not that they're going to just be nasty and curse you out. It's just, it's going to be a shift for them too that they're not ready for. And that's how a lot of us healers lose friends and end up becoming separate from our families because we're doing the work that hasn't been done for generations. And so because no one is used to this at all, that we look like the black sheep. Oh, she's so this and oh, okay, now she doesn't want to do this. Oh, now she's all high and mighty. That's a projection of their insecurity. It isn't about you. So when you become strong in that foundation of yourself, that won't affect you. You just see the hurt that's coming from them versus you taking it personal. So it's, again... It takes time to get here where I am, what I mean here, like my 15 years of work. It takes time. Even when I moved to LA four years ago, I had, the universe had so many lessons waiting for me here. And the biggest one was surrendering because you have your own back. Why would you disappoint yourself? If I am the universe and one with all and love is everything and light, why would I disappoint myself? So whenever there's a worry arising, surrender. It'll always have you. And that was really difficult to surrender because we always want to feel in control, right? We always want to, we have control, but only for ourselves and the way we think and the way we feel and the way we act and say things. Those are the things that we truly have control over is our own life. Nothing else. Everything else is an illusion of that control. We don't have it. And it is okay if you think that because, again, society has molded us into becoming fear-driven humans, not love-driven humans. So to undo that, that's why I say it takes time. Yeah, it definitely takes time. It takes, a, you know, it took me a good decade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. You know? yeah. And that was after the two decades I spent on psychotherapy couches, you know, investigating my brokenness, right? right. So that was after that. Right. Then I finally got, I said, enough of that. I'm not broken. I'm going to find out how I'm whole Mm. and start Mm. asking a different question. Instead of what's wrong with me, I'm going to start asking what's right with me. Instead of asking, you know, what pain I'm in, I'm going to ask, how can I solve it? Mm. 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 You know, I just started asking different questions. And because I asked different questions, I started getting different answers, started you know, different things started getting revealed to me. I got connected yeah. with this person instead of that person, you know? Yeah. And then as I walked through that door, some other cool stuff started happening. I started to learn some new things and then walked yeah. through this other door and, ah, oh, this, now I'm finding out this about myself. And, yeah. you know, and when you've walked through all those steps and you've gone through the process, what happens mm-hmm. on the other side is this amazing thing that I think you're also experiencing, Claudia, is that when you connect with people who have also walked that journey themselves, we all understand each other. So well, like if we've known each other forever, it's the craziest thing. Everybody I've interviewed, I've never felt awkward and weird. Like, okay, well, why do I have this person on? No, no, it's a different experience. It's like, we don't have to like wonder or think, do I trust? No, it's a complete alignment. It's just like, there's that person. I'm trusting this because it feels right. And my whole body's lit up and everything's yes. And we all get each other. That's the other thing. It's like, we're saying things and it makes total sense. Yes. And so we, it's like we crossed over from this other world that was upside down. Mm -hmm. We went through our own journey of turning things right side up. Right. And then we met a bunch of other people that also showed up in this new space with like everything right side up. And then, then when you go kind of back out into the other space, it's, it's like, there's just like this chasm of communication. It's like, Mm. guys just don't get it. Like, it's just not understanding because you didn't walk the walk. You have to walk the walk to understand. You definitely have to walk the walk. And, you know, sadly, society in this country creates certain comforts so you don't walk the walk. They make us greedy. They make us selfish. They make us spoiled. And they give us everything at hand. We don't have to really go and struggle to go get anything, you know. And so 
that is why a lot of us don't walk the walk because the society already created a safe, comfortable, secure place for you. Why do you need to question it? And that is why you should question it because you need to provide that for yourself, not a system that's in place. You need to do that for yourself. And it is interesting because when you do the walk, and that's why I mentioned that, you know, the the path of truth is a loner one, but because the world has consciously, collectively expanded so much so that if you are just starting your path now, I will tell you you are a very lucky person because there are so many of us now that you can just go online, on Instagram, on Facebook, on podcasts, which is beautiful and find us and say, oh, they're walking the path. Maybe I can ask them questions. Yes, that's why we create this. Ask us questions, approach us. How can we help? And so then, you know, how do people tell the difference between something based in fear and something based in love? Because Mm. I want to just point out that when you start to walk the walk, everybody around you that's still in the matrix Mm -hmm. will basically think you're insane. Right. You don't know what you're talking about. You're doing it wrong. And they'll try to give you a lot of evidence to show you how just how misguided you are. Yes. And then when you finally find someone, like let's say an expert, or like for me, one of my experts is Dr. Zach Bush. I love him. When I hear him speak and I see his messages, it lines up for me. It makes total sense. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. and when he speaks, my heart is totally open. And I'm really good at feeling people at this point in terms of like if they're full of crap or they're or they're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this man is like 100% for me, like lit up, yes. Right. Right. Yeah. He's on, right. He's on the path that I've mm-hmm. come to walk. Now, there's like a love response, right? Like that's a mm-hmm. love response, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's my body telling me in love, right. this man's telling you the truth. Right. Then when I go to social media and in a, in a, maybe a space where people are not aware of what I'm aware of or haven't walked the walk that I've walked in their own way, even mm-hmm. then they'll, in order to like counter my love for this person, they'll turn to fear tactics yes. like smear campaigns. Yes. So that to me is a differentiator. It's like, if you're a kind of person who's in a certain consciousness right now where the answer to things is to discredit somebody else's truth by smearing it, Mm -hmm. that's a sign you're in the fear matrix. Correct. A hundred percent. Or if you're listening to someone that you've watched or look for advice that you don't know, right? These, there's a lot of people out there that we watch and listen that we don't know, but question, is there advice coming from a place of fear or love? Are they healing? Or are they feeding their ego? Which one is it? And it's not going to be hard to differentiate the two. It's really not. Well, it's hard at first if when until you, once you've walked the walk, it's easy to differentiate. Right, right. But when if you're in the middle of the walk or you just started the walk, it's actually very confusing. And, Mm -hmm. you know, do you remember your own journey with that? Because I remember back to how confusing it was for me. Yes, I actually didn't have anyone to look up to. And that was really difficult um, because I was just being the black sheep (laughs) by myself and not having any guidance at all. And just following my intuition is what I did. It's honestly how I got as far as I have until I found idols and people that I talk to now, you know, having the same space as you. But in the beginning, it is very difficult not having someone to look up to or have guidance while you're trying to make sense of the things that that are coming at you and you're just like, okay, I get that, but what does that mean? I don't understand. What, okay, what do you want me to do with this information? What do you want me to do with what I know even, right? Like, uh, okay, great that I have a great intuition and great that I know some truths. So what, right? And you get to that. You're just like, I don't even know. So what I kept doing was just continuing the self-healing part. I was like, okay, I may not know what all these things are and maybe what I'm able to do for myself with some of this information, but let's continue the yoga and the meditation and learning about mindfulness, right? Through Eckhart Tolle, The Alchemist, all these beautiful books out there that 
resonated with my my feeling of being lost. And I think through books in the beginning are truly helpful. Books in that aspect of you feeling lost, there's a lot of books out there. For me, it was Buddha by um, Deepak Chopra. So his story was part fictional, right? Because it wasn't a it wasn't a biography of Buddha, but something in the way that he wrote it that tapped into the way I was lost and made sense as I went on to this journey. I was like, oh, and the alchemist also helped me tremendously of this being, feeling lost and not knowing what do I do with all this and the feeling and the knowing. And then it just kind of started making the, when you start walking the path and you dedicate yourself to the path, the universe will start putting books or people or Instagram posts or movies, things that all align to what you are seeking. But you you have to also learn how to observe and pay attention that that's coming your way, right? Because we can also get lost in, you know, work and family and your social life and, you know, you trying to make sense in the little space that you do have. So in that you can, it can be difficult to see the signs, right, of the information that's coming through. But if you apply that to your 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 beginning path or your middle path to start observing the messages that are coming to you because you are asking the questions, it'll be there. That would be in my advice. It's just the messages are there waiting for you to see them. They will always be there. They're not going anywhere. So don't feel like, oh, I missed whatever time, year five. The message will sit there until you're ready to receive it. And I fully, you know, I, I've dropped into this understanding mm. that this whole experience we're having right now collectively is a divine conversation. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And it's an awakening to the divinity within each person. Mm-hmm. Yes. And as part of that, all you have to do in my experience is invite it and say yes. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you'll be led to the decision, to the decision, to the decision, to the decision that gets you out of the situation you created for yourself when you were being egoic. Right. But you just have to say yes. It's like, yes. okay, I recognize I don't have all the answers. I recognize I had a lot of certainty and faith in something that humans created and that might not have been my best mm-hmm. choice and that might have been a false idol. Right. right. I admit it. I'm open for divine guidance. Mm-hmm. And I'm open to be led to the messages and the people that can help me to shift my life towards a better outcome. Yeah. All of you can take what she just said and play it every day. (laughs) That's it. That's it. That's it. Boom. You're you're set. If you just started or in your your middle of your path, play what she just said every day. And I guarantee (laughs) you that the shift will be so incredible within yourself. You're going to be blown away. But we... That the tiny time. little bit of yes. It's it's all they needed is this, this right. much yes, like a whole split seconds worth. Right, right. What <laughs> you said was less than what like 15 seconds of what you just said. <laughs> and you could play that every day. Imagine who doesn't have 15 seconds. So, you know, I'm not saying play what she just said. I'm saying find, you know, these beautiful other healers that are doing a daily mantras, right? That's what that is. What she just said is could be a daily mantra for you. So just find these daily mantras that'll help you shift as you're, you, and you're going to feel crazy if you're in the beginning, like, oh, this is crazy. I'm crazy. You're not crazy. It takes a lot of courage for you to even start the path to divinity of finding that part of yourself. That is incredible. So I would say like for yourself, give yourself that credit that you have the courage and the love for yourself to start. Yeah. And don't wait for bigger consequences before making that invitation Mm. to the divine. You know, Uh I mean, we're all collectively sort of, I'm sitting back like in the peanut gallery, just watching. Right. Because I've already made my bed. I'm with God, you know. Right. (laughs) Right. I mean, whatever, whatever God's telling me is what I'm doing. So I'm with God 100%. And, uh, to the detriment of whatever else is going on around me, you know, if people don't agree or don't understand, it's not my problem. And you can, you know, whatever works for you, it works for you. You don't have to call it God or you don't have to call it the universe. Source, creator, divine mother, you know, Allah, I don't care, whatever, all that is. But all the same stuff. (laughs) As long as it leads you to your divine self (laughs) and to see the beauty within yourself and others, okay, I don't care, call it whatever you want. 
Whatever you want. Use your own word. But like that larger than you essence that is making you live. Right. There's that one. Yes, that one. Right. And there's, you know, (laughs) you don't want to get too deep into it. But yes, like you touched up on, you know, these these things that we created and it takes away, you know, a lot of the religion culture and all types of religion. It takes away a lot of who we truly are, because in essence, all these gods didn't exist until we existed. We made them real. They cannot exist unless we exist. If there was only no humans on the planet, who's God or Allah or David or Muhammad or whomever? ISIS doesn't matter. It, we, we are that powerful. We created them for us. So if that says who you are, that's powerful. That is who we are. We are the creators with it all. Yeah. And oftentimes to find that kind of light, you got to go through some shadow and darkness and Ooh. fear and uncertainty and not knowing and, you know, bump up against the edges of it and sometimes Funny because, brick walls. For sure. I, I've had people tell me, oh, well, Claudia, you're, you're so calm and you're so zen. How do you do it? And I will. And it's a joke because, you know, life is life is funny. We take it lightly. So I'll lean over and be like, it's called suffering. You know, because it is it it didn't come for free. I didn't become Zen and calm just because I woke up today and be like, oh, this is what I'm going to be today. No, absolutely not. You go through some hell before you see the light and be able to have peace within (laughs) yourself. Like it's not for free. (laughs) Yeah, I had my own personal hell. I walked through my own personal hell like for a good part of my life. Right. Until 40, I said, you know what? I think there's another way. I'm going to try that instead. (laughs) Right. Go over here. And, and I, you know, for me, it was eat, pray, love, you know, so we're looking for more Mm. books for people to read. Right. For me, it was eat, pray, love. And it was that moment where she just got on the floor on her knees and was like, okay, God, I'm praying, you know, I'm open. And I had that. I was like, okay, she did it. So I'm going to do it. So I got on the bathroom floor and I like, you know, right. Right. And I said, okay, I let you in. I, okay. The the point is the surrender. I realized I had made a mess of things. Like I had made such a mess of it. There was no way I could fix it. Right. And we're kind of collectively in that spot. Like we've made such a mess mm-hmm. of it. We can't fix it. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so when you're in that spot, you, you what kind of want to invite God's source creator. Right. Especially now as a collective, we <laughs> need to collectively call on that source and be like, okay, we all messed up. <laughs> we all messed up. We see it. We know well, how, you're, you know, divine, all powerful. We're part of you and you're part of us. And yeah, we welcome that aspect of us. That is that. Because right. That's the only thing we, that's going to make this thing work right now. A hundred percent. I mean, the, the answer is, is simplistically love, but because the mess is so big that we individually have to start, you know, it's funny because there was a, um, maybe in the 80s and the 90s where conspiracy theorists always said the truth will not be televised. I mean, the revolution won't be televised, right? And that is because the revolution is inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the true revolution, doing this work. Because when you become this light and this healer, it is impossible for you not to affect others in that way. Because they're still looking at you like, oh, wait, she actually went through a lot of shit. And yeah, I constantly now. remind people of that. I'm like, go back and listen to my first book called Awakening to Me mm-hmm. and look at where I am today. Number one international bestselling author of two books. Let, let me know. I mean, just, <laughs> right, I don't know what right. else you need. I mean, like, right. But great relationship, great partner, great relationship with my mom. He'll really, you know, I, what else do you need? You know? Because I needed God. That's what I, I, I needed. I needed source. I needed that aspect of me that was bigger than me. Right. And right. when I let that in, I started letting it in that day that I read that book and I said, okay, she did it. She got on her knees and she, and I did that. And my life started changing. Yeah. And doors yeah. started opening and I, and I got led to where I needed to be. Yeah. It's changing the narrative within yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Once you start to see, you know, as a beginner person, like, that's where you're like, wait, I, I I see the narrative, but now I'm just like, this doesn't feel right. But what I'm feeling inside feels right. So how do I make this the narrative versus the outside is trying to tell me? And that's where it takes a moment. It takes a while and time to shift that because it's working against that light. So it takes a lot of work because that 
system is working against our light. And so at every corner that you turn, there'll be doubt, fear, doubt, fear, doubt, fear. And so you have to get used to that and know that when you turn the corner and those things are waiting for you, you're like, okay, great. But because I'm a love and light, so have at it. It's another, it's another mirage. It's like one more mirage. It's like, right. one more, you know, seeming wall mm-hmm. and you walk right up to it and start walking through. I love, there's this moment in, um, Harrison Ford, what's the name of the, the adventure movies? And he's going to uh, go, Indiana Jones. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the, uh, and the, uh, he's going to get the elixir of life. Right. So he's, he's got to walk and there's mm-hmm. no bridge, but right. it says walk across the bridge. And he's like, right. Oh my God, I gotta, I gotta step into this. I'm going to die. Right. So he steps off and onto the bridge. Then he puts some dirt on it and he sees it. It's like, oh, there it is. But see, that's the thing. You, you don't see the bridge until you step. Correct. You have to step in faith mm-hmm. to the mm-hmm. other place. Yeah. There is no other way. You cannot prove it. Right. You can't prove your way there. Right. <laughs> You, if you're looking for the scientific study that's going to reveal it to you, you're never going to find it. You're going to find evidence to the contrary. Yes. The only thing you can do is take the step in faith 100%. and see what happens. I love that analogy. The Indiana Jones one is perfect. It's so perfect. You can see it looking back because you, you. Right, right. We we're looking at it now. We're looking at it back. Like, yeah, it's there. Like, yeah. We we made it across. So you can make it across. But it's that first step of faith. And that faith is within yourself that you know that you can do this because we're all proof now that you can. Yeah, you we're can all proof this. that there's so much proof. You know, this is what I love about this strategy, this God strategy this time was like, Let's just get so many podcasters telling their own experience of overcoming the fear and coming back into love that it mm. is undeniable. Yes, a hundred percent. I never in my life planned to be a podcaster. Never. Me neither. Not, that was not not on my agenda. Right? No, not at all. And then the universe was like, you know, as time passes and you're trying to figure out what do I do? What do I do in my life? What am I? What is my purpose? And it's it's. Even if you're asking the question, it won't come to you until your purpose is needed. It's just how it works. And all you can do is keep the best thing, even though we don't know our soul's purposes. But what you can do in the meantime is the continuous healing because that never ends. That doesn't end for us. We're still doing it. There's still things from the past that come and you don't know what's going to trigger you, what's going to come up at any given moment. But at this side of the bridge, we are prepared when it does come and not let it not be reactive to it and just see it and be like, oh, I see why this would normally trigger me. But now I understand why it triggers me and not be reactive at all, you know, with whomever you're having the conversation with and just being the observer. And that's the ultimate self is just being that observer and not allowing the exterior to affect you. Again, that takes work, but you know, uh, what, what Kerry was saying is that as podcasters and all these people that we're interviewing is just more of the proof that science cannot give you in this space. Sadly, that's not because imagine if science could prove what we're doing and science can prove everything that we're doing. That's boring. And then we all can do it. And it just, it's a scientific thing, recipe, you put, recipe, you put it in and then you have your whole self. Yeah. And then you lose the mystery, which the is mystery the, the whole thing is about because is life, the mystery. We all want What is life? What is the meaning of life? There is not one answer. Oh. There's not an answer because the mystery of life is so grandeur and beautiful. If you really see it, that you can't put it into words in this limited body, in this mind. Like it is bigger than this. Just It's bigger this. than the mind. And so you got to get outside the mind to start comprehending it. <laughs> right. A hundred percent. And that, 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 that comes for everyone. So don't worry, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. That's like, what, what did you just say? I don't understand. That's because wherever you are, just where you are. And that's cool. And just yeah. keep stepping. You know, if it just doesn't, if stepping. it just went like this, just notice that it went like that. You know, if it's just like right over your head. Right, right. Just notice it just went right over my head. I'm not there yet. I'm not getting that part. Okay, cool. Right. Just keep stepping. You'll get it. It'll like all of a sudden one yeah. day, it'll just like pop open for you like a little flower and the little right. petals will peel back and there'll be a beautiful scent and you'll go, 
oh, right. I get it. What is important here is also, <laughs> you know, for you to get that flower is you have to practice this every day. Meditation. It's a practice, right? Meditation, yoga, whatever your, your modality. <laughs> yeah, the modality that you choose to be present within yourself is so important because uh, like you're saying, eventually every day, it's like practice, right? We practice Netflix every day. Who doesn't know where something is immediately? You don't you close your eyes and be like, okay, I picked them up. You should be able to do that with yourself. <laughs> yeah. Not Netflix. My Netflix. My My Flix. Flix. That's a good one. <laughs> My Flix. Like you should be able to My know Flix. like, oh, when anger arises, oh, I know what to do. Oh, when sadness arises, oh, I know what to do. Yes, you should know what to do, but we don't. And that's where you're reactive and where we're, you know, we spiral out into depression, anger. In Eckhart Tolle's book, I think The Power of Now it was, or the other one, either way, you know, he brought up a good point of how unconscious we're walking, right? And that's how people end up killing people, right? Because you don't have control over yourself and your thoughts and emotions that you can snap unconsciously and do something terrible as killing someone. And then when you snap back and you realize like, oh, what did I just do? And yeah. that could be even in an argument, right? Let's not go so extreme. But even in an argument, you're thinking like, why did I say those things? And then back it up even further. It can be, why did I just project all that negative toxic energy at somebody because I'm angry at them instead of processing it within myself, you know? So these right. are layers of discernment, layers of realization that as those armorings dissolve, right. you get more and more awareness of your impact of right. your thoughts, your energy, your for emotions, sure. you know, and, and, you know, we're for, you're already forgiven because you don't know until you know. Mm -hmm. Right, right. <laughs> you don't need Thank goodness people forgave me, you know, so like I went through it too. Right. We have to forgive ourselves in order for others to forgive us. And no one else is going to give you that forgiveness. No one else will stop seeking outside of it yourself, please. <laughs> because no one's going to forgive you until you forgive yourself. And, you know, self-forgiveness is something I, I talk about a lot because it's so important because that'll lead to non-judgment of yourself. If you can forgive yourself, that'll lead to the non-judgment. And, I was going to touch up on something. Oh, love, right? How when we are in a relationship with someone and they break our hearts and we're like, oh, love is stupid and love is that. Love isn't doing that. It's the person. So we need to stop blaming love because love is always here, ever abundant to give us. It is the person and the misuse of love. Because also if we're coming from a place of hurt, then how can we know what love is, right? We can't love someone deeply as they deserve until we do that for ourselves. That's right. We can only love someone to the capacity that we're able to love ourselves is for sure. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful interview. I appreciate your wisdom sharing with us today. I'm definitely going to link to your podcast, Presently a Key with uh, Claudia. Is there anything else you'd like to share with people as a starting point for getting to know you better? Yes. The most important thing that I like to say is just patience. Patience is the most difficult virtue to learn. And I would suggest starting there because it will help you as years pass on and you keep learning about yourself. When you have that patience, then the self-forgiveness, then the self-compassion and the, the non-judgment, you'll see it. It'll start to unravel slowly but surely. But patience is the key to all of this. Absolutely. Patience is the key to all of this beautiful episode. Um, I just want to encourage everybody who's been listening to please share this episode out to, you know, anyone you think would benefit from this message and, you know, take a little risk and be, be a love advocate, you know, share this message out and uh, like, subscribe and all that kind of jazz uh, wherever you saw it. We appreciate you in getting these messages out. Um, it really helps us to spread the word. And in the meantime, we're going to give you kisses. Want to give us, help me give kisses, Claudia? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Here come the kisses, everybody. Mm -hmm. Mwah. 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 So many. <laughs> we, we love you you're not alone we love you and carrie thank you, you so much for having me this is so wonderful thank you for oh. coming on the show claudia again i'm looking forward to be on your show as well and yes. yeah everybody have a great week just remember some of these points that were shared here today and just open yourself up to some divine assistance on your path and you might see some miracles start to happen and the mystery yes. unfold 
Yes, absolutely. It's beautiful. Don't deny yourself that beautiful no, no. magic. Yes, yes. Amazing. Embrace the magic, everybody. We'll see you next week on Soul Nectar Show. Bye for now. Bye. If you found even one gold nugget in this episode of Soul Nectar Show, will you do us a favor? Will you subscribe, like, and share this episode? Maybe even write a comment and let us know what you thought about it. We really, really want to engage with you at a much deeper level. Let's be part of community together. Have a great week, everyone. Bye for now. To dive in deeper to nourishing conversation, visit soulnectar.show. Take a sip from the drip of the nectar From the source of who you are Yeah, yeah